And the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter number 16 that the rich man died. And the word death is from the Greek word thanatos and it means the cessation of life. Living is over. They're gone. They're not here anymore. You have a body that looks like that person, but it's not that person. You have the features of the one that you loved, but there's no response from them. You have a dead body, and that dead body, therefore, comes under an entirely different set of rules according to the Word of God. Something big has taken place. They're not here anymore. And the Bible tells us that the rich man died and was buried. And then the Scripture says in hell, he lifted up his eyes. What happened to this man? The same thing that happens to any man. His soul and his spirit departed from his body. He might have been very shocked to find out that there was something on the other side. That there is something awaiting him when he left this body. He may very well have boasted and bragged all of his life about the fact that I die like a dog and that's all there is to it. And when I'm gone, I'm gone. But to his surprise, he found out that he was still conscious after he had left this body. It could have been the greatest shock that he'd ever known in all of his existence to realize that he was in a place that he didn't even believe existed. And he realized something else too. He was fully aware of all that was going on about him and he was falling, falling, falling into a bottomless pit. It was here that he began to take note that to his shock and dismay, he was out of control. He was in a pit and he was falling head over heels, headlong. Down, down, down he went as the sides of hell flew up about him. He could hear that he wasn't alone. Down beneath him, screams were rising up from beneath into the lowest hell. He could smell, he could hear, he could taste, he could see all the senses that he had on this earth. He had them there, but his location had changed. Oh, what a horror it has to be upon a human soul to realize that all of the lies and the joking and the making fun now didn't make any difference whatsoever. They awakened in hell and that's where he is. He was in the place of the lost and all Oh, how lost he was, lost without God and without hope and falling into hell. What a sensation it must be to be falling head over heels, down, down, down you go and you fall headlong into hell. You scream, you beg, and my friend, it doesn't do any good because you're in hell. Hell hath enlarged itself. It's wrapped its arms around you. It's pulling you into its midst. Down you go further away from God into damnation itself and there's nothing you can do. You are in the pit. You're in a place called hell and your mind goes back to what you might have said on this earth at the times you've heard the gospel and been the preacher back to you to get saved and you rejected him. The memory in hell must be horrible torment. The thirst must be horrible. It must be terrible to burn night and day 24 hours a day seven days a week and you say there is no hell to your surprise you'll find it out firsthand and the rich man died and he continues to fall it's been two thousand years since the rich man died and he's still falling he's still falling deeper and deeper into the pits of hell's a big place friend hell ever enlarges itself it is never satisfied it's like a giant squid that reaches out and pulls into its midst all it can its mouth is agape and open and wide it receives all that would reject the lord jesus Christ are going in the hell. He's been there 2,000 years. If he could just have one moment of peace, just a little moment of peace, just a second or two away from the flames, he'd beg for it. Oh, what he'd do! But he has none. It's night and day, 24-7. His mind must endure it. He knows, being a human being, that there's a tomorrow, and another tomorrow, and another tomorrow. He knows there's no end to his suffering, and that is suffering itself 
himself just to know that there will never be a time when hell will turn him loose. He is in a horrible place. Horror like horror has never been known. Let the horror of knowing that you're going to burn forever flood through your soul. Let the horror to know that you're in a dark pit and you'll never have relief from that. That is hell enough for you and hell enough for anyone. And without the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll go to hell. He's been fallen for 2,000 years. Many have been fallen for 2,000 years. They've been screaming. They've been begging. They've been crying. And my friend, they can't do a thing to get out of hell. What a place it is. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 16, it's a place of torment. And torment he is, tormented, night and day, night and day, night and day, said preacher. What a horrible thought that somebody would go to hell. Was that somebody you, dear friend? Are you sitting here this morning listening to me, fully cockeyed, convinced in your mind that you're good enough never to go to hell, but the Lord Jesus Christ is the only one that can keep you out of hell. If the rich man can be brought up this morning and I could stand him here on the stage, before you and give him five minutes to preach. You've never heard a message in your life like you'd hear from him. He'd let you know in unknown certain terms that hell is a place of fire. Hell is a place of loneliness. Hell is a place of burning. Hell is a place of sorrow. Hell is a place of despair. Hell is a place of lostness. There is no other place on this planet like hell. Into the heart of it he falls and it begs you and, pre and plead with you if at all possible, please accept the Lord Jesus. Please repent of your sin. Please get right with God now while you can. While the day is near. While the hour is right. While you can be saved. The rich man had begged you, plead with you. He'd do anything he could for you to keep you out of hell. In Luke chapter number 16, he said, Sin Lazarus, I've got five brethren. I don't want them to come into this place. They're going to see me here. They're going to ask me why I didn't warn them. I'm going to have to spend eternity with my five brethren in hell. But the rich man continues to fall. The Bible said there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I can understand why they wail because of where they are. They gnash their teeth one against another and fire engulfs them. They breathe fire. They live in fire. Fire embraces them. And they scream night and day. The sounds of hell must be horrible. Imagine all the souls are in the pit. There must be a horrible sound. If you could pull back the gates of hell this morning and hear what's going on, you wouldn't want to hear it. You wouldn't want to hear that kind of crying. You wouldn't want to hear the loathsome scream that comes up out of hell. It rises way deep down inside. A pit where men and women know they have no hope. And a place where the dying die and never live. A place where the second death begins to take its toll on the human soul. Dying and never completely dead. Dissolving and never completely dissolved. Hell, my friend, is what the Bible says in Luke chapter number 16. The rich man died and went to hell. There was a hell at the cross. There was hell in the nails. There was hell in that uh, cat of nine tails that ripped his back open. It was hell for him to hang there for six hours on the tree. But he did it for you. He did it for me. He suffered my hell. Glory to God to keep me out of hell. And I bless the name today of the only one who could conquer hell. There's one that has power over hell. There's one whose word hell listens to. There is one that can shake the very foundations of all creation. And that's the name of Jesus. I know that name. I know that man. I'll never have to go to hell because I know him. I'll never burn, thank God, for the Lamb. Bless the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God.